So I am really torn when it comes to DNF culture. So if you don't know what DNF culture is, that's basically where um, if you've like announced a book that you're going to read or something like that, um, I guess it could apply to like movies and stuff too, but it's mostly a book culture thing where um, you don't finish a book. And so you DNF it, did not finish it. And so sometimes people will DNF a book and they will still rate it and kind of talk about why they didn't finish it. Sometimes a DNF is just that. It just says that I did not finish the book. They don't rate it or give any explanation. They just don't finish it. And then um, you'll have people who will not finish a book, won't read it, but then explain why. And so that's kind of more what I do when it comes to a DNF. Most of the time, if I DNF a book, I have no intention of going back to that book. I could, but that's not the expectation that I've set. Um, However, if there is a book that I DNF and I know I'm going to go back to it, then I say something. And so I have that experience that I want to share with you um, for this video. So this is my book review video. I just released the um, Goodreads Challenge video. So if you want to know what I'm currently reading and all that kind of stuff, what's going on with my book club, so check out that video. This is going to be just about reviews. So there is one book that I did start in the month of January, but did not finish. So I DNF'd it. And I want to talk about that real quick because I did leave a review for it. Um, it's unrated, um, but I do plan to go back and read this book. So here is, um, let's see if I can get to my review. So the book itself is Fractions of Existence, and this was an IWSG book club read for the month of January. And I've been kind of in a reading funk and I didn't want to leave this book high and dry. So this is what I wrote. I did not rate the book. Um, it's still on my want to read list because I do want to go back and finish it at some point. And this is what I wrote. I started this book in January of 2023, but stopped reading it after chapter seven. This isn't because I didn't like the book. I plan to go back and finish the book at some point. That's why it's still on my want to read list, but I'm not going to do so now and will not leave a rating without giving the book proper attention. Even though I read through chapter seven, I was mostly reading out of obligation to my book club and that's not fair to the author or anyone who may read my review at some point down the road. I decided to stop and put the book away for a while so I could come back to it with fresh eyes, hopefully at a time when I'm in a better mental space. I've heard good things about the book and want to be in the right place to really decide if I do or don't like it. So yeah, basically I read seven chapters of the book and I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really remember what I read. I mean, I know like the basic plot and everything like the concept, like I really like the concept of it, but I just have so much other stuff going on in my brain and I just didn't feel comfortable forcing myself to get, cause I've done that before. I forced myself to get through a read and then maybe my reaction to it isn't as positive as it could be, or maybe it's overly positive because I'm not paying attention enough. You know what I'm saying? So basically I am probably going to get back to this book maybe next month or the month after, but like, I'm not putting this back on my shelf for years to come. Like I want to read this book in the year 2023. I just don't want to read it right now because starting out, I just ha didn't have the right mindset for it. And I want to clear my head before going back into it. And so that was one thing that I started in January, but didn't finish it. So now I want to get to the actual books that I did start and finish. Um, the first thing that I started, let's see here. I actually I think I may have started this book in December. I'm not sure. This um, book was also an IWSG book club read, but for what month, I could not tell you because I didn't read it in that month. <laughs> I started reading the book with the intent to just fly through it, but then I started using it. So let me just get into the review. So the book is Self-Editing for Fiction Writers, How to Edit Yourself into Print. So this was a nonfiction book that the book club picked up. And right now my mind is just not about nonfiction, but this book was helpful. So let me just get into my review. It's not a long one. It says, I started reading this book thinking I would fly through it just to get the idea of the content without trying to apply any of it. Then I was given the channel challenge to do some editing and this book more than proved its worth. I completed most of the practice activities, but more so 
I applied the different, different lessons to the book I was editing. I know the title suggests this is for self-editing, but I was able to apply this to other people's work as well as my own. The jury is still out as to whether I'm good at editing, but at least I know I was on the right track by following this book. It helps you pick up on so many things, many you already know, but forget about in the moment. Highly recommended, recommended to writers who plan to pursue publication, whether traditional or indie. So that's my very quick overall um, review of this book. It took me longer to read than it would have if I had just gone through it. But like I said, I actually started to use the book on a book I was editing. And so I was like, there's no point in me rushing through this if I'm using the content. So that was that book. It gave it an overall star rating of five. So definitely check that out if that's something you're interested in. So the next book that I... Um, read uh, I do believe I started and finished this in the same month so I read the book of shadows this is the sequel to the spell site series which is a spin-off of the ghostwriter series <laughs> needless to say I'm a big fan of J.H. Moncrief and so um, let me just get into my review I gave it an overall star rating of four um, but let's see what I got so actual rating 4.25 um, this sequel to the Spell Sight series was hard to read, but not in a bad way. It was tough to see the struggles the main character was going through. Characters in this spinoff series and the original Ghost Rider series have faced many obstacles of varying natures, but this was the first time I felt like the world it's that the world was against the MC. So yeah, she had a lot of stuff going against her. <laughs> Laura is such a nice lady. She doesn't deserve all of this negativity, but I understand the author's need to tell the story. Despite what the character goes through, J.H. does make a point to keep the reader hopeful so it isn't all doom and gloom. But that ending, I just can't. I need to know what happens. I know hate is a strong word, but I hate cliffhangers. The worst part about it is that I totally get why the book ends the way it does. It's the right ending for this book, knowing there is more to the story, but I can still be a little mad about it. <laughs> um, I just want to know that everything is going to work out and Laura and all her friends will all have happy endings, but I know that a happy ending isn't always a guarantee um, that I'll get, um, that I'll get uh, and everything, <laughs> hold on, let me back up. These are my words. I mean, you guys have seen these videos before. So let me actually slow down and read what I wrote. Um, I just want to know that everything is going to work out and Laura and all of her friends will have a happy ending. But I know that a happy ending isn't a guarantee that I'll get everything I want as a reader. Um, I love that this author delights me and makes me so mad at the same time. I love these characters and can't wait for the next book. Seriously, I put off reading this book due to other commitments, but when the next one comes out, everything is getting put to the side. Highly recommend it to fans of J.H. Moncrief, dark fantasy, paranormal and mythology-based fiction, magic, worlds with diverse characters, including a strong female lead. So um, if you know anything about me as a reviewer, um, please take my words into consideration. The only reason I'm giving this um, book a 4.25 rating is because I really do have like serious psychological issues when it comes to stories that end on what I perceive to be a cliffhanger. I absolutely do not like cliffhangers, but again, the way the story ends, it totally makes sense for it to end that way. But like I said, I have a right to still not like that. <laughs> it's a, it's a really great book. I sincerely cannot wait for the next one. Um, and I'm still mad at myself for taking so long to read this one. So that is what I actually read in the month of January. And um, I'm very pleased with my January reading experience, especially since um, my 2022 reading year did not end on a high note. So my year is starting off well, and that is what I have. I would love to know what you guys think about the two books that I read. Um, if you'd like to share some stuff with me, I would love to hear about it. And so until next time, guys, stay safe and be blessed. Hey, if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel. 
give it a like, and also leave me a comment. I would love that. Okay.